co-host if you want to share anything on your end yep yep sounds good um well, I want to I wanna also show you all something. It's so hard to see on my webcam, but these are literally all the notes y'all gave me last year. They are all here. This is my bed. And then I also have, oh, I'm not going to show you that wall because that'll expose how messy I am. But I'll take a picture of that wall. And um, I have like this wall decal that says, be your own kind of beautiful. And then it's also surrounded by all the notes that um, I got. And um I was actually about to wear my um, shirt that y'all got, it had the state on it, but um, I actually wear it so often because it's so soft. And so I wore it to the gym and it smelled really bad. So I didn't wear that, but just know that there's um, lots of love here. And I definitely um, just always, always, always genuinely um, enjoy talking to y'all. And it's, it's so great to see familiar faces, see new ones, and um, just to be here. But I will go ahead and share my screen. Um, also exposing how many tabs I have open at all <laughs> times in my life, because that's just how it be. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of run through this presentation. Um, for those who have seen it before, it's, it's definitely, um, very similar, if not the same to the one that you have seen, but I definitely always like to keep it pretty standard to just kind of introduce, um, you know, for, for those who haven't ever heard the story, kind of keep that um, fresh. And then of course, like at the end, if you have any questions or if you want to reach out or reach out personally um, and kind of get something beyond what we talked to about today, like I'm, I'm definitely happy um, to do that as always. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the Love Your Natural Self Foundation and a little bit about my journey getting there. Um, so this is actually a little bit unupdated. I finished my master's, which is really exciting. Um, and I studied education um, and nonprofit leadership, which was really, really cool. Um, I think it really set me up to... Um, kind of find my passion. And I think overall my passion is just like working with students um, and just making sure that each student realizes how awesome they are and how much potential they have. And the idea that every single young person can do anything they set their mind to really. Um, and I think that's, that's kind of my huge um, goal. And yeah, just gonna continue to run this nonprofit um, the best I can. Um, I'm currently based in Houston, Texas. Um, which this is so different because this is the first time we've done this virtually, but um, Houston's actually where I'm from. More specifically, I'm in Spring, Texas, and that's where I grew up. And this is my first time living here um, full time since I've back, been back in college, um, which is really, really, really interesting. Like, I think, um, I don't know, like, I remember all the food places I missed. I've reconnected with and visited so many old friends. Um but yeah, so it's, it's been kind of like a nice homecoming kind of feeling because I think when I was last here, when I was 18 years old and I lived here and I went off to college, I was such a different person. So I think to come back as an adult, you definitely feel all the things that have grown and changed about yourself. Sometimes you don't see your own growth, but I think you can see it when you make a major lifestyle change like that. Um, so I wanna start off by telling my story um, since you know a little bit about me. Um, oh, and then also just about me. I always like to talk about the um, shows I'm currently watching just because um, lots of binge worthy stuff. Um, I'm actually watching the Babysitter's Club because I used to read that when I was younger. <laughs> and I it was like, I don't know if I'm lame to be like 23 watching this by myself in my room, but it's so good and it's so sweet. So that is also one really fun thing I've been doing because I found all my old books because I was cleaning out some old boxes and I was like okay I totally need to like co-read and watch the series because it's it's pretty cute okay so now that you know a little bit about me just generally I want to get into like a little bit more serious stuff I always think it's super super important to just um talk to y'all and have you get to know me a little bit um before I get into my story but a lot of what we're going to talk about today is my personal story. Um, so when I was three years old, which here are some pictures, um, I lost 
um, about a quarter size patch of hair. And I don't actually remember losing that hair, but one of my first memories ever as a three-year-old was sitting on the counter and my mom was doing my hair and I just hear her start crying. And I heard her call all my siblings in the room and she told them um, there's something different about her. There's something wrong. I, I, I don't know what it is and I don't know what's going on, but she's losing her hair. And I think from a very, very early age, I just heard that voice echo in my head that there's something different, there's something wrong. And of course my mom didn't like mean it and I love her so much, we have a great relationship. But I think that from a very young age, I was just scared of being different. I was like, I wonder what that means. And I wonder why it scares people so much. Um, and that's exactly how I felt. So then in middle school, when I was around um, 12 years old, I kind of had that fear in my heart, but I didn't have to face it, except one night. One night when I was 12, um, I woke up to find all of my hair on my pillow. I woke up one morning and pretty much all of it was gone. I lifted my head and I found um, just strands and strands. Um, hold on one second. I'm going to pause this real quick because my internet's doing something weird and I want to make sure it doesn't disconnect. Okay, it started saying that one of my wires was loose, so I thought I would just push it in. Um, but yeah, so I, when I was 12 years old, I um, woke up and overnight I had lost all of my hair. And I remember just lifting my head off my pillow and seeing a hundred different strands on my pillow. I remember like running my hand th hands through my hair and getting chunks and chunks of it. Um, I was terrified. I had literally lost my hair overnight at only 12 years old. Um, and I think that, you know, I always tell my students to kind of think about that and put that in perspective. Cause I remember that when I was 12 years old, I really cared a lot about, um, you know, what everybody thought and fitting in and just like having a good group of friends. And so from Friday night to Saturday night for something so big about me, so, physical to change. It was, it was terrifying. And I didn't know if I would ever feel beautiful again. Um, and so immediately my brain went to, well, different means bad. What are all the ways that I can hide this? And so I asked my mom to buy me um, a wig, which this is my first wig. And um, you can tell with this one, it kind of has a little bit of red in it. It was not my natural hair color. It was the cheapest wig that we could find um, because it was all we could afford. And so immediately I, all of a sudden within one night, didn't have any wig. I had red hair um, or hair with like a reddish tint. And my hair used to be like up to my shoulders and it was all the way down my, like, you know, to this level, um, which it just can't grow that fast. So I think my hair was clearly fake. And um, I had to think about how I was going to walk into school. I was absolutely terrified. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to talk to my friends about this, how I'm going to talk to my teachers about this. But I was hoping that I would just blend in and nobody was would notice. But of course, I was wrong. Um, I walked into school and it felt like everybody noticed. Um, from the second I walked in, people were staring. I heard whispers. Um, you know, I, I just could hear people um, just like starting rumors about me. They were saying maybe she's wearing a wig because she wants attention or because she wants boys to like her or because she doesn't have any friends and she's trying to get people to notice her. Just so many rumors as to why I was potentially wearing the wig. Um, the rumors spiraled so out of control that someone made a Facebook page to post all the guesses as to why I was wearing a wig. Um, they put gum and food in my wig every day. They started to be games about like, what can we put in her wig? And you know, what, what can we pull off? Like, what is the biggest piece of food we can put in there? Or um, what new idea? Um, there was even a note in my locker titled 50 ways to go kill yourself. The bullying got so bad. Um, so just in a matter of days, I went from having a full head of hair, um, going to school with the wig, and then just facing this cruel, cruel bullying. And every single day I would just really, really, really struggle with my mental health. I thought to myself, this is never gonna get better. Um, life just felt so unfair. I felt so angry at um, everybody who was bullying me, but most importantly, I felt so angry at myself. I just 
thought, you know, if I could be different, if I could be more beautiful, everything would just be okay. Um, and I started telling myself those things constantly. And so I realized that people said mean things to me, but the things that I was saying to myself were so much worse. Um, so even though I was facing all of this bullying in school, I would come home and instead of being kind to myself or telling myself that it was okay and it was gonna be okay, I would go home and tell myself that everything that they're saying is true. You deserve this. This deserves to happen to you. Um, and that was hard. I wasn't showing myself any love or compassion. And I think that when you take a lot of hurtful, mean behavior and you compound it with even more hurtful and mean behavior, it just becomes this like vicious cycle. Um, you know, I think that when life is hard for a friend and they're going through a really, really challenging experience, you respond with so much love, kindness, and compassion. But I noticed that life was really, really hard for me. And I was responding with so much anger and resentment and telling myself that it must be something I'm doing wrong. Um, and so I knew something had to change. I realized that I had low self-esteem and I was bullied se severely. So I was practicing this behavior called self-bullying. I was beginning to bully myself. And so examples of that are this idea when you're starting a new task, telling yourself, I can't do this. Um, when you're facing something challenging, telling yourself, I'm not good enough. I'm not strong enough to get through this. I'm not smart enough. Um, the last one, I feel like I noticed all the time during job interviews or, um, you know, when I was in school during tests, before I even started an interview, sometimes I was like, I'm going to fail or I don't know if I'm going to do well today. And so every single day I would tell myself these negative things. And sometimes I still do. And I began to believe them. Um, you know, when other people told me them, it was one thing. But I think when I began to tell myself them, it just got reinforced. And these became truths. It became a truth that I felt like I couldn't do it. It became a truth to me that I was going to fail at everything that I achieved. Um, and so that was really, really heartbreaking to have these truths in my head. So I want you to ask yourself, how many times have you said something negative to yourself what things have you said so many times that it's starting to feel like the truth? And how can you make that stop? How can you change those truths in your head and make them more positive? And I realized that it was a lot about language. For me, I had a day where I hit rock bottom. I felt like I truly couldn't do it anymore. And I had to make a choice. I had to make a choice that I wanted to start to change the language in my head. I wanted to start to love myself the way that I would love my friend. I wanted to not give up on myself in the same way that if someone was going through a hard time, I would never give up on them. And that was such an active choice that I made. And that choice started with language. Every time that I told myself I'm all alone, I had to practice saying people care about me. Every time that I thought to myself, I'm useless, I had to practice saying I am enough. Every time that I told myself I'm unworthy, I had to remind myself I am worthy. And every time I felt trapped or just like I was stuck, I had to remind myself I can and will do anything that I set my mind to. And so it was this really, really powerful transformation because if I had said these negative things to myself 500 times, I knew that I needed to say these positive things to myself 500 times for it to work. Um, and it wasn't natural at first. I feel like for the, in the beginning, my brain would be thinking I'm all alone and I would verbally be saying people cared about me. So I had this tension, right? Like my brain said one thing and my voice said another, but every single day I challenged myself to use my voice, to say positive things about myself, to write positive things in my journal, to write positive things on my mirror. And one day the voice inside caught up. Um, I don't know how long it took. It took a, you know, for me, like a couple months and it, it's a practice that I still have to do um, as an adult, but I know that it's possible. So if you're still thinking all of these things and saying these things feel pointless, just know that it's truly, truly, truly a practice. It's truly something that you have to work on. Um, you just have to work on changing the negative into positive. And you have to realize that confidence does not mean being perfect. 
It doesn't mean that every single time you'll get it right. It doesn't mean that every single time it's going to be easy to change these thoughts. It means that you love yourself through your imperfections. Um, when you think about, you know, a friend of yours or someone that you love having a bad day, um, I always think about what I do when my friend has a bad day. And my thought is always, if my friend's having a bad day, I love them harder than I would on any other day uh, because they need me more. And I think it just needs to be the same with yourself. If you're having a bad day and you can't stop thinking all of these things, love yourself harder than you would any other day because you need yourself and you need that voice in your head to be really positive, especially when the world is hard. And so when I started practicing this, when I started kind of accepting myself, I started accepting the fact that I didn't have any hair. I started appreciating that. I started noticing things that were really positive about myself. I realized I love my smile and I love my eyes. And even though um, I'm different, that's not a bad thing. It's just who I am. Um, I found this feeling called freedom. And freedom to me meant being able to walk outside without my wig and to feel as confident and as beautiful as I could. Um, I remember the first day that I walked outside without my wig, I almost felt like I was in some kind of a Disney movie. Like I felt like music was playing and I felt like birds were chirping. Um, and I, I just felt this glow. I just felt different. Um, and that's when I knew I had in a lot of ways achieved freedom. I knew every day wouldn't be like that. I knew every day I wouldn't have a Cinderella moment or a Disney princess feeling kind of moment. But I knew that if some days I could feel that good, and on the bad days, I could just love myself a little harder. I just knew I was going to be okay. And I think that's what it is about then more than anything. It's not about being perfect. It's just about knowing that you're going to be okay. Um, and then I got to high school, college, grad school, and it's just been such a special time in my life. Um, I've gotten so many cool opportunities with my organization. Um, you know, I, in high school, on the first day, I went without my wig. I posted a video. And um, ever since then, it's been this really cool kind of sensation that when I learned to love and respect myself, other people learn to do the same. And I think that was really, really, really cool and such a cool realization. So when I finally kind of came into myself and learned to go without my wig um, and really learned to grow past losing my hair um, and just could accept who I was, I decided that I wanted to bring this feeling of self-acceptance to others. I thought to myself, well, this is such a cool feeling. Um, and I remembered when I posted my video taking off my wig on Facebook, um, I saw so many comments saying that because you went without your wig, you inspired me to go without makeup or to get help for my depression. And I thought that was so cool. I thought it's so cool how when you have the courage to be who you are, you inspire other people to do the same. And I just thought to myself that I can't stop doing that. So when I was 15, I decided that I wanted to bring this feeling to others. I wanted to bring this courage to others. So I decided to start a nonprofit. Um, and it all started with the idea of the International Day of Self-Love, which all of you know is coming up. Um, so at 15 years old, I was brainstorming. I was brainstorming. I was like, what do I think this world needs? And I decided that I think it needs an international day of self-love. Um, and I thought, what day could be great for that? And I thought February 13th, the day before Valentine's Day, because you have to love and accept yourself before loving others. And I knew nothing about starting a holiday or a movement or anything along those lines. I just thought, how cool would it be if we could have this day? I mean, we have so many other days dedicated to other people. But what if we had a day that we could just spend checking in with ourselves, doing something brave for ourselves? If, you know, you've always wanted to see uh, a counselor, you know, going to therapy for the first time. If you have had such a busy week, pausing and giving yourself some rest. If you like to write, maybe going outside, finding somewhere beautiful and sitting outside and writing in your journal. Um, what if we had a day where we could just pause and the most important thing to do on that day was to check in with you. Um, and so I started it in my high school. I asked my principal if we could host it on our campus. And um, that February 13th was so special. It felt so different than any other day at school. Everyone just felt like they were being more accepting of each other, more kind to each other, and most importantly, more, more kind to themselves. And I knew I had to spread it to other campuses. So I emailed 
thousands of school counselors around the country and I asked, you know, what would this day look like on your campus? And so since I've started it, it's been celebrated in 150 schools in 28 different countries. Um, you know, back to the foundation, it helped the organization grow impacting around 50,000 students a year. Um, and we've just been featured on so many cool platforms that I didn't even dream of as a kid, like Good Morning America, MTV, and just so many more. Um, and the reason I mention all of this and share all of this is because I was only 15 years old when I started this organization. I wasn't much older than um, a lot of you. And I think that we often have this perception that like young people can't do anything or they're not there yet or they're not at that stage in their life yet or they can't make a difference. Um, but you can, and I think it starts on your own campus. Um, it starts on, you know, the, the Google Classroom that y'all made. It starts on your interactions with your peers and your friends. It starts with the interactions with yourself. Um, I think making a difference, sure, I've done big things, but it all started with the way I talk to myself. It then started with the way I talk to my friends. And it then after that started with the what I did on my campus. So don't, don't, don't dismiss these small steps that you take you make a difference in the world just by showing up, just by being who you are, just by logging into this Zoom meeting and choosing to be. All of that makes a difference. And that's really, really cool. So what does hosting a day of self-love look like? I think that um, you all know this so well because you've done it so many times, but um, I just wanna show you some things that campuses have done. Um, they'll do fun little photo booths where students can share photos with themselves um, of themselves and um, kind of take pictures without makeup or whatever their natural self looks like. Um, they'll do tons of sticky note projects, um, which I know y'all suggested where you write yourself something kind or you take something kind, just whatever you need. Um, they'll do tons of decorating the schools and events. This is actually on a college campus. So it's really cool because like um, every kind of age group needs self-love, and so it's a practice that never stops, so it looks really different for every age group. Um, and yeah, I just want to kind of, you know, reinforce the idea that anything is possible if you believe in your ideas enough, and anything is possible if you believe in yourself enough. Um, again, I, I really, really want to emphasize that although my organization has done huge things, and I'm so excited to kind of be here and share it with y'all, it started with the daily actions I took in terms of taking care of myself. So, um, you know, I think I think people ask like, what's the first way to get started if I wanna do something like this? And my advice is always um, start with the voice in your head and make sure that you're being kind and loving and supportive towards yourself and just your own biggest cheerleader. Um, and I realized that, you know, although I made an organization to change the lives of others, the work I do more than anything changes my life. I think that any bad day that I'm having, any hard time that I'm having, um, kindness towards others and running this organization definitely cheers me up. And it's definitely really, really healing to be able to like tell my story and reflect on it so much. So I feel super, super grateful to do this work. Um, now I'm going to share a poem that I share every year, and um, I've never stopped sharing it just because every time I get so much good feedback, and if I was with y'all in person, I would bring you all copies, and I'm sure I someday will, um, but for now I'll email it back and you'll get fun little virtual copies, so don't worry, you'll still get a copy. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to share um, a poem that I wrote. And I think it just sums up my message really well. So I always like to share it. Um, and so I'll just read it and you can follow along. Don't you wish it weren't true that there are hidden parts of you, pieces barely held together by the smallest bits of glue. You try to show strength by acting brand new. You act like everything is always okay. You push every bit of darkness away. When it comes to joy, you always speak out. You speak without any fear or doubt. You speak out loud for others to see because you think these are the pretty parts of me. But inside, you know it's true. Joy doesn't always define you. You know that you are so much more because inside of you, there's sometimes a war. There's a war that has put cracks in who you are. There's a war that has given you scars. 
you have learned hide to hide everything you go through because you don't want people to think less of you. But darling, you are enough. And don't you know it's these scars that make you tough? It's these cracks in who you are that let out light. It's these cracks in who you are that give you fight. It's these cracks in who you are that help you shine bright. And I believe these cracks should be displayed in plain sight. So don't try to hide the pain and the tears. Don't try to hide your deepest fears. Don't try to hide all of the emotion. Your depth and beauty is larger than the ocean. And it's this depth and beauty that people want to see. It's this depth and beauty that make you into who you want to be. Beautiful girl, it's not darkness that comes from who you are. It's a light that shines brighter than the stars. These cracks in who you are let out light a light that reminds people to fight. It's a light that through the darkness guides people home because they are reminded they are not alone. And when people see your light, theirs will turn on too. And they will feel brave enough to share the things that they go through. The cycle will just create more light and through the darkness, the world can fight. Because when you choose to embrace who you are, your light slowly heals other scars. So I know it's often hard to see but it's the hidden parts of you that carry the most beauty. And the reason that I share that is because I think that we all have so many struggles that we go through on our own. Um, I mean, I, I know I definitely do. Even, even on my most smiley days, even on my most positive ones, I know that there's consistently inner battles that I'm going through. Um, I know that all of you, even though you're here and you showed up, there might be challenges that you're having in your life, challenges that are really, really hard to share with other people. But I just want you to know that these challenges don't make you weak. Um, it's funny because when we th think of words like strong and brave, um, we often think of really positive things. But I want you to remember that you know, your bravest, not when everything is e easy, your bravest when your voice is shaking, but you choose to speak anyway. Your strongest, not when everything is easy, your strongest when you don't even know how you're going to make it to the next moment, but you choose to go on anyway. So in those ways, like, you know, your most, your most, at your most just beautiful and shining to me, not when everything's easy and perfect, but when you have a bad day and every day you show up and you do your best, that is what like self-love is all about. It's not about all these easy days. It's not about um, feeling like you have to always be perfect or always be on or just get it right. It's about just trying your best and every day doing one kind thing for yourself, no matter how small and just moving forward the best you can. So I like to share this because I think that people think about these negative parts of themselves and they feel so embarrassed, but in reality, um, getting through those difficult moments makes your bright moments all the more special. So that is what I have for y'all. I always like to share just some information. So if you wanna follow along, um, you definitely can or reach out. Um, I appreciate y'all bearing with me through technology. I was like, um, I'm just learning to do a lot of these like Zoom presentations and we're getting new Wi-Fi, but I'm glad I could be here and I'm glad it worked. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm just so happy to be here and I would love to like answer any questions or hang out more or just whatever works. Thank you so much for being here. You're, 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 I mean, you're doing great with the Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, all right, so let's open it up. Um, if anybody wants to unmute their mic and ask any questions. Um, if you are uncomfortable asking your question, you can direct message it to me and I can ask it for you. Or if you just want to check to, to ask me if it's a good question, you can do that as well. Um, but, you know, open up your mic. So let's talk to Sana for a little bit. Go ahead, Keely. I see you. So when you were talking about how you emailed like a bunch of counselors, did you have to like ask, ask oh, sorry, ask permission or like, how do you find their emails? That's super fair. Um, so I did a couple things. I um, started with like, of course, like talking to my parents and I was like, okay, logistically, like where could y'all take me for these presentations? If someone said that they wanted 
you know, something in their school or like I started thinking about like, oh, like, you know, is there something I could do at home? Like, could I do a virtual presentation, like make a really inspiring video? Um, so I just like made a plan first because I, I didn't want to just email all these people and then not be able to follow through. Um, and then I also made an information sheet. Like I made like a one page Microsoft Word sheet that described exactly what I kind of wanted. Um, and, and I shared some pictures from my campus. And then I just did a bunch of Google searches. Like I knew that my district would be a good place to start because they knew me. So I, you know, pulled up a list of middle schools and high schools for my district. And I just went through their pages and found each of their counselors. Um, and then I started with like neighboring districts. I was like, okay, like that could be a good idea. And kind of once I did the first few locally, um, you know, there was, there was some traction, people would do like articles locally. And um, I remember like my first out of state school sent me an email and said like, oh, I saw an article about you and I would love to um, have you come to this state and do a presentation. And, you know, um, I had enough fundraising. And so I knew, well, I'm going to one school in that state, I should reach out to more. And so it was, it was honestly very like organic. Um, I guess it all kind of, kind of just made sense at the time. And so, yeah, like, again, I think it just starts with your campus and then look at neighboring campuses. And um, it, it seems overwhelming when I think about like, oh my gosh, 150 schools, how did I even get there? But when I remember the steps, it all, it all made sense. All right, Zyarian, um, you're next. And then after that, Morgan, you can ask your question, okay? Um, was it hot or scary for you when you had the, when you, like, um, both went to school and like, not going to wear the wig? I think I, I, I you had a Was it, like, scary and hard for you? Okay, I know what you asked, yes. Your, your mic was a little glitchy, but it was absolutely scary and hard for me when I went without my wig. Um... I think personally, I felt very ready. So I had my very like personal kind of like moment when I walked outside and like I described, I felt like the birds were chirping. I felt like there was music playing. And I remember I just felt so positive. And my older brother was a senior in high school. So he actually drove me, he had a car. I was a freshman, so I did not have a car, but he took me to school. And I remember he, um, it was his first day of school too. So he drove me. I was fine all the way there. I was fine in the, like, you know, just like on the drive. I was like, wow, this is so cool. This is so fun. Like, I'm so excited. And then he parked his car and he was like, okay, it's time to go in. And I immediately felt like, I literally told him, I was like, drive me home. I changed my mind. And, you know, he was, he was a supportive big brother. And he told me like, I'm not going to drive you home but like you can take as much time as you need like what do you need help with um and I told him I just needed some time alone so he was like okay well like you can lock up the car and hold on to the keys and like um so I just remember sitting in that parking lot and sobbing I remember regretting my choice I was like I regret going without my wig this was just crazy why did I think I could do this um, I remember feeling really nauseous, like to the point where I felt like I was going to throw up. I was so scared. I was like, am I ill? Like, I, I don't know. Um, and I remember just like, like shaking. And so, yeah, I was so scared. I was like, I feel like every bone in my body was really scared. But again, I thought about the definition of the word like brave and courageous. And I remembered that brave and courageous don't mean that you feel great and you do something that's, you know, that's not it. Brave and courageous mean that you're literally shaking. Like you are so scared, but you go forth and you do your best. And so I told myself, like, even if I'm shaking all the way through, even if I feel like my head's going to explode today, even if I feel this sick all day, like I'm just going to try. And I thought I would, I thought I would feel that bad all day, but I would say it just got easier. It got easier. Like the first minute was probably the hardest um, the first 10 were not much better. Um, I think after like the first like three or four class periods, I started to feel a little bit better. Lunch, I immediately got back to being the most anxious again because I was like, there's so many people at lunch, everyone's going to see me. Um, and then, you know, the rest of the day was kind of easy. And, you know, then day two was just a little bit easier. 
Um, and I guess like the best part of that question is to remember that like self-love's not linear. It's not like day one was like the hardest and then from every day there it got like easier. Like I think it's it's just so random. Like, you know, maybe day one was like the hardest, day two got easier, day three got easier, but then day four was as hard as day one. Um, and I can't really explain it except that like just in the same way that like you constantly have to check on your physical health and take care of yourself. Your mental health is just a muscle. You just have to exercise it. And some days it's, it's harder than others. Go ahead, Morgan. Who came up with your organization name and what was the inspiration behind it? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, I love the Love Your Natural Self Foundation, but I actually think that as I've grown, I would I would definitely um, change it a little bit. But I came up with it when I was um, um, 15 years old and I was first kind of developing everything. So the first thing that I thought of and what um, it kind of started off with was um, Natural Day. That's what I called the International Day of Self-Love, but it's gone through some name changes. So when I was um, 15 and I came up with it, I, I decided to call it Natural Day, which it's still called that and used at many schools. And that's totally great because um, I kind of like that it sticks with like, you know, my idea when I was younger, but um, it was just very natural that I thought, okay, Natural Day, Love Your Natural Self Foundation. And I kind of um, stuck with that name. And so that was like the inspiration behind it. It was like the February 13th day and that kind of inspired me. And I think now I call a lot of it, like I change a lot of the phrasing and I call a lot of it the International Day of Self-Love or the Day of Self-Love. Um, yeah, and I think the biggest reason for my change was because I think that um, I saw how individuals celebrated Natural Day and some individuals um, still wanted to wear makeup to school, but they still had a lot of self-love in their heart. And so I realized like, okay, like natural can mean different things to everyone. Like some people love wearing makeup and that's cool. And so at its core, I realized what I'm really trying to teach. And especially as I got older and understood my mission a lot more is that like, no matter what state you choose to be in, just make sure you're happy and you have a lot of love in your heart for yourself and you have a lot of compassion. Um, and I think, I think that's what I landed on. So, um, I came up with it when I was 15. I think I've grown a lot and of course it's grown a lot. Um, but that's, that's a great question. Just to add to that, I'm not sure about you all. Um, Miss Coop and I used to not wear makeup on that day when we came in person and from, and I'm an adult and I'm not wearing makeup right now because pandemic changed my perception of makeup. I'm not joking. I have a baby face and I know this. So I usually look like a student when I walk through the building, but I remember calling Miss Coop and being like, can I go to work and actually not wear makeup? And I had very poor skin when I was in middle school. And I think that makeup became a blanket for me. And I think that it's so powerful to like when that, when we started talking about not wearing makeup, I remember being like, oh my gosh, no foundation, no mascara. And I think that something as simple as not wearing makeup one day is more empowering than one might think. And I'm a lover of makeup. I love my doing my own makeup, I like doing other people's makeup, whatever it is. But there is something so empowering about just like. I don't know if I ever shared um, that like a similar story. I think it was the second or third year that I was doing Real Girl Stand Strong at my old school up in Northern Kentucky. And we were celebrating Natural Day and the news came to do a special on my program at the school and I wasn't wearing any makeup <laughs> and I owned it. I was like, yeah, we're actually celebrating natural day today. So we're all natural, no makeup or anything. So all the girls were like, they were kind of freaking out cause they didn't have any like mascara on or anything. And they were getting interviewed by the news and like all of us were just like natural. And it was so beautiful though. Like it was just so beautiful because we were, they were doing a special on our program but it was also in celebration of natural day, which like really embodied everything we were trying to teach them anyway. So it was just really cool. 
Yeah. yeah no those are those are such cool examples um sorry go ahead what were you gonna say no I'm just thinking about like how much is like this age that you all are at as a middle schooler is when most of my insecurities came I think I was most like free living little elementary student and then middle school came and I think that's when my I see some of you guys nodding your head that's when my mindset kind of changed and I think that why we think Sana's message is so important not only for all women but for you all is because this is this is the time in your life where this stuff starts to change and we just want to let you know and I and we are dead serious when we say this you are enough you are beautiful, you are worthy, and you have nothing to prove to anyone but yourself. Your worth is not outer beauty. It's fine, we can appreciate it, we can, we can do what we need, but when who you are on the inside is what matters. Because when you, when we leave this earth, people are not gonna be saying, oh, she has the greatest mascara on her eyelids. They will instead say she had the kindest heart. She made me feel welcome. She, when she walked in the room, people lit up. And that is not an easy thing to live by. That is something that anyone can tell you what an adult still struggles with. But I, yeah. No, I live by that, Ms. Halligan. One of my favorite, one of my favorite quotes is, I'd rather be thought of as smart, capable, strong, and compassionate rather than physically beautiful because those things all persist longer and after beauty fades. So exactly what Ms. Halligan said. It's about who you are as a person, what you project and that compassion, that empathy, um, you know, taking care of yourself in those ways is way more important than your physical features. It's what so funny because um, my friends and I, I used to think like, I don't have any hair and I, I bet like people just sit around when they hang out with me and they're just like, wow, she, she just looks so weird and different. Like, I mean, I totally understand, of course, when someone first meets me, it takes like a moment for their eyes to adjust because like, it is a little different than what you see on the day to day. But I was like, I wonder if that feeling ever leaves. Cause I know when I first meet someone, sometimes I can just like, especially if they don't know what I look like before they meet me, I can just see, I'm like, I can tell that they're looking at the fact that I don't have any hair and it's, it's scary. Cause I know that they're noticing that and thinking about that. And I always used to think like, I wonder if that feeling ever goes away or if I wonder if like my friends are ever embarrassed to be out in public with me. Like I, I used to have that insecurity all the time. And I remember we were playing a game, we were playing taboo. So basically I had to describe um, something without the word, without saying the actual word. And so the, the word on my card was hair. So I wasn't allowed to say hair. So I described the word by saying something I don't have. And everyone started describing all these random things. They were like a car, car insurance. I don't know. Like you don't have like, oh, you, you said you didn't have that book. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, oh, you don't have this. Oh, you don't have time because you're so busy. You travel. And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? Like the most obvious thing I don't have. And all of them were just like, I don't know. Like we listed the things that you don't have. Like you have a lot of things. And finally the timer ran out and I was like, it's hair, y'all. I don't have hair. And they were like, oh, we forgot. <laughs> and I just like that story so much because I think like it really, it's kind of silly, but I think it really exemplifies that like, like my friends don't like love me or not love me because I have or don't have a certain thing about the way I look. It's so much more about just kindness and being there for each other and just like the love you have in your heart for each other and I think especially on the International Day of Self-Love like I think it's it's the best kind of it's it's like any other thing in life you get what you put into it and so I would I would think like where maybe maybe makeup's not a point of insecurity for you maybe makeup just feels more like art and so going without makeup doesn't scare you so maybe that's not it for you but I mean, if there is something that scares you, if that like not wearing that mascara really, really scares you, or if there's something that really does feel like a challenge, I think it's just a cool like jumping off board to be courageous because you know, you're not alone. I'll be celebrating and doing something that scares me. Um, all of us will be kind of celebrating. So you're just not alone. You can try something that scares you and 
I, I can bet that everyone who in your life who loves you is going to love you the same after that day. Um, you know, a day of not wearing mascara or of asking for help or of taking some time off for yourself. It's not going to change a thing. And I think that's one of the beautiful, most beautiful realizations that this day can give you. Um, I felt like, you know, I'm going to go without my wig and the world's going to end. And it didn't, it's all good. Like, and, and, you know, I have, I have such great people and just more than I could have ever asked for. I think that you um, mentioned a really important thing there as well, Sana, is surrounding yourself with those people who mm-hmm. also love and value you for who you are. Super like you said, like that was the last thing that your friends even said was anything about your hair. And those, <laughs> right. are, those are your real people. Those are the people who see you for who you really are. And I think that's a really important message for all of these girls in here as well is, you know, surrounding yourself with people who, you know, highlight your best qualities, who bring out the goodness of you, who lift you up and who aren't, you know, saying things about what you do, what you like, what you look like, what's your what kind of music you like, whatever. Um, it's, it's so important for all of you girls to have, you know, those people in your life who are going to be there for you and who respect you and who um, just value all of your, your best qualities. Anybody who is bringing you down is not really somebody that you need to be, you know, surrounding yourself with. It's, and it doesn't matter because I know a lot of times in middle school, um, it's hard because of uh, popularity or peer pressures or wanting to fit in and not being an outcast. But you all have to remember that middle school is only three years of your life, high school is four. And then, you know, like, who are you really? It is okay to be who you truly are because who you truly are, you will connect with people who value that about you. Yeah. And that's really important. Yeah. And there's gonna be people that surprise you that you're going to kind of look back and say, okay, that wasn't, that wasn't good for me at that time. But everything that happens in our life is a learning experience and no age do you ever stop learning. Like I know some of you guys be like, school's never going to end. It doesn't because life is school. Okay. And you're going to be learning for the rest of your lives, but be open to being that person that sets that example. Okay, you guys have been given a gift, okay? For some reason, you decided to join Miss Coop and I, be a part of this club, and we we consider that a gift. This is something Miss Coop and I say all the time, I wish I had this when I was in middle school. Like, I wish I had a group of community of girls that I could talk to an adult with outside of school. I can talk to others, and it was a safe space where I knew that the whole goal was community, self-love and worthiness and so this is great but miss coop and i can get on tangents sometimes but yeah, I, am sure. I, I mean i could talk about this for days you have no idea but zyarian you've been so patient and i am hashtag so proud of you so you can go ahead and you your girls comments. know you girls know that real girls stand strong is uh hayes's best kept secret so we, we <laughs> but Zyarian, i'm so proud of you for not like yelling at us for speaking so much because we know we have so go ahead baby Oh, well, Eva has a question. Eva does have a question that she had put in the chat a little bit ago. So, Zyarian, do you... Eva, Eva, Eva. Thanks, Zyarian. <laughs> Go ahead, Eva. What's your foundation's mission? Oh, good question. I'll not need it. Sorry, it cut off. Could I, could I hear it one more time? What's your foundation's mission? My foundation's mission, um, and I wish I had it exactly memorized. <laughs> um, no, but basically I would say in my own words, um, it's an organization created to uplift and inspire others um, by like just in the way um, of celebrating who they are. So I think like that's kind of the biggest key piece there. Um, and we have a lot of core values, but I would say that some of my favorite core values are um, vulnerability. So just like being really, really open. I know it's hard and I know like the innermost thoughts that you have or like the insecurities, those are some of the hardest things to share. But I really think that 
we have more in common with people than we think. Um, and my deepest insecurities, when I've shared them, I've gotten a lot of, um, like it's been one of the best bases to connect with people. Um, so I think like finding a good, secure, safe group and sharing them. Um, I think courage is a great one, just like being really scared and challenging yourself. Um, and then I think like mental health, I love that it's one of our core values because again, I think it's like treating it like your physical health, just realizing it's a process of keeping it. I love that. That's so great. Eva, what a great question. Okay, Zayarian, go ahead, baby. So when I was like little, like in elementary school, I think it was like second grade. And I just had this like good one best friend. And like, I used to have like at eczema that was like, that was like, kind of orbs and stuff so I used to be super scared to wear like long sleeves and then my best friend was like it's okay I have it too but like don't be scared to show your natural self and then I just started wearing like normal shirts with uh not long sleeves I love that so much I think that that's so so cool and I think that it's really really important to remember I was thinking about this when we were talking about like friendship and community I think that the reason that I talk a lot about self-love is I think that sometimes like unfortunately and again like just remember like middle school is just three years of your life like sometimes there are people really supportive around you sometimes like you might in a certain situation especially I know y'all have the safe space so I'm I'm so glad that you do and I'm so glad that you have each other um, but like sometimes you might be in a situation, whether it be at lunch or in a certain class where you feel like there is no one safe here. And I just, I feel like I don't fit in. And so I think that's why it's so important to start with your own voice and like, make sure that you're good. Like I got me, I'm good with myself. Um, but yeah, then another big part of the journey and a big part of the story that you shared that I just love so much is like, life is so much easier when we're all just like kind and honest with each other. And it's, it's so, so special because I think for as many mean people as there were to me in middle school, there was a lot of kindness. I just had a hard time seeing it. I think there are a lot of good people in the world. Um, and so I, I don't, especially I think the bullying part of my story, I don't want y'all to listen to that and think that like, this is a world created just to like bring people who are different down there are people who do that I'm not I'm not gonna lie there are people in my story who did that but there's a lot of people here and in this world especially when you share who you are who also want to lift you up for being different um and so I'm, I'm so glad that you have that experience and that you had a friend who kind of helped you feel more comfortable um I always say to just try to be like really open and receptive to love even when you're hurting a lot because I feel like more often than not, in some form, whether that be through a teacher, a counselor, a program, a nonprofit, a friend, like it's it's there. Thank you, Sona, so much. I know that you have touched me personally, and I feel like every year it's like I go through it again. It's like one of those like, okay, I, I've had my year of Sona. I needed this, and it, it could not have been <laughs> a better time. I mean... I know a lot of times, like, I mean, a lot of us are virtual. We haven't seen a lot of people and it's been hard in a different um, kind of way than rather than usual. But before we let her go, does anyone else have any questions or anything? I want to take, I, oh, go ahead, Miss Mack. Hey guys, I'm sorry, I'm going to turn my camera on. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you guys. Uh, I have been in education for over 20 years and actually I'm, I'm experiencing COVID right now, just to be full disclosure. So I'm in quarantine. Uh, but I did want to jump on here to say I appreciate you. I, I look forward to your story every year and every uh, all the out of all the programs and I've done many over the years, 20 something uh, years worth of programming and this is by far one of my favorite top top five programs that I've done. So I had to get on here today to see you and hear your story. I hope you girls realize how important it is that you all have people in your lives to take the time out each Monday to offer this to you guys. Um, don't take this lightly. The cool kids aren't the cool kids <laughs> when you grow up. 
I'm not muted. I'm not <laughs> you look back and think, oh, wow, I should have. <laughs> I always I thought I was cool. cool <laughs> Wait a minute. I, yeah. I know I'm so cool. I dress up in a pistol. <laughs> so cool. We know what you, know what you don't mean. Don't laugh at me. We know what I you know. Love. I, I just had to say thank you uh, once again. I, I do appreciate your story and I, I share it with you all the time. It's like, I, I know a person that's done TED Talk, you know, so <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I appreciate Ms. Coop and Ms. Halligan for bringing you out and, and whatever I can do to you know, spread your word and spread the joy and well as well as be on here with that no makeup and <laughs> quarantine and that whole look. It's, it doesn't matter about that. You know, at the end of the day, it's, it's who you are and how, how good you feel and how you make others feel. So appreciate your story. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm so happy to be here and thank you so much. That's, that's so sweet. I want to take a picture um, because yeah. I'd like to post that on the website as well. So I'm asking that if everyone can just turn on their cameras for a minute so I can get these beautiful faces in here, get a pic. I know sometimes we turn off our cameras because our, our, our internet lags and stuff with it. I get it. So I'm going to look at this. Yeah. <laughs> I want the mask on in the picture. Yeah. <laughs> we do have to stop writing in the chat though, because it'll pop up on the picture. So let's give the chat a break. Um, waiting on some more faces here. Well, thanks, Ms. Gardner. Look at you. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Um, All right, I know. Get your, get your, okay, Damien, stop writing in the chat. <laughs> All right, I got some faces here. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at us. Look at us. I got three more. Can I get it? Strong pass. Okay, we have to stop writing in the chat because it'll show up in the picture. Oh. <laughs> All right. All right, here we go. Are we ready, Miss Gardner? I see you. All right. All right. I'm going to take two, okay? Because I always like to have my backups. Okay. One, two, three. And one more. <laughs> Look at Mia with her mask on there. One, two, three. Look, All right. you are so cute. <laughs> Precious angels. Um, I think I, I would like to show her the videos that we have, if that's okay with you, Miss Coop. Go for it. Do you want to stop recording and yeah. then...